All right, this is the last detransition update video. I made one at my one month mark, one at my two month mark. Where are we now in terms of this? It looks like I detransitioned around uh, seven months ago. That's pretty crazy, but it does look like that. So seven months, um, time has flown by, honestly. And so I thought I would do one more, just to give you a complete picture, because in my first video I had just gotten out of surgery, and in my last, uh, my two-month one, I was very depressed, and certainly not out of the woods on a couple of things. So, um, I think I'm in a much better place now, and I just want to run through these, I don't want this to be a long video, I want this to be more informative, so, um, uh, I just wrote down a couple of things on this paper, I'm going to run through them, and then I'm going to talk about what I currently experience. These things on this paper are what I used to experience. And I guess I could just show you the paper. I, mean, I don't think there's anything here that I'm not going to say. So here's the paper. Um, yes, my handwriting is horrible because I didn't think I'd be showing this. But anyway, you can pause the video and, and see the topics. But um, horrific eye pain. I'd wake up and it was like someone had stabbed me in the eye. Actually, no, the first time I, it happened, which was during my transition, um, it felt like my eye had exploded because I was dealing with blurriness and double vision and pressure in my eyes. So what I thought when it first happened is, oh, my eye just exploded. I have to go to the ER. And I went to look at the mirror, look in the mirror, and I realized my eye was totally fine. Um, but then my left eye and left nostril started watering. And it was only in my left eye that I experienced the pain. Um, and it was just the most bizarre thing like your only your left eye waters and only your left nostril waters and you feel like someone just literally took a knife and jammed it into your face um putting it like that is actually putting it lightly it was such an excruciating amount of pain i began screaming in pain before i was even conscious because this happens when i wake up when i would wake up at certain times during my transition um it is the most bizarre way to wake up <laughs> you are in such extreme pain that your body like jerks you up like in like a sitting position before you're even conscious and so you wake up sitting screaming in pain i don't know how to say it any other way than that it's not fun <laughs> it's not fun you don't want that um and then i have blurriness in my both my eyes actually for the first few hours and double vision in my left eye um so, vertigo, room spinning, um, one of the worst things a human can experience, honestly, is vertigo. Um, I've experienced a lot of things people don't want to experience, and one of the worst ones is vertigo. You do not want to live when you're in that vertigo state. You do not want to live when the room is spinning. It's very scary. You're very, you know, anxious. If you're prone to panic attacks, you'll probably have a panic attack. Um, and it's uh, absolutely horrible. And the nausea that comes along with it, there is, and you can't do anything because the room's spinning. You can't look at anything, you can't do it. So you're completely useless and you are just miserable, as miserable as miserable gets. I would take extreme pain over vertigo and nausea. I would, because at least extreme pain, I can, I can you know, grit my teeth and get through it. You can't do anything about the nausea and vertigo. It completely cripples you. Um, so, yeah, that, that if you have that, I'm really sorry because that's a horrible thing to have to deal with. Um, unable to stay awake. I was unable to stay awake for normal human hours. I would stay up for about six hours and then sleep for about 12 to 14 hours. Um, and straight. I mean, like, literally sleep straight 14 hours. And I, it's not even like I was... Yeah, it's a weird sensation, because I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Um, you just feel like you, you gotta lay down. You gotta lay down. Um, and, uh, let's see. Tingling in spine. This was towards the end of my transition. I would have these, like, tingling... feeling in my spine. My whole spine was just tingling. And it felt like, um... 
And these are weird symptoms. They're hard to describe because I'm just coming up with this on the fly, sort of. But yeah, it feels like um, maybe like ants crawling down your spine or something. You know, like there's just little tingles, tingles, tingles all the way up and down your spine. And it's not a good sensation. Um, it's not painful. It's not scary. Maybe it's a little scary because you're like, what? what's going on? But it's, it's more like um, just distracting, distracting. Um, and of course, it makes you think, okay, am I going to start losing feeling in the rest of my body? You know, it's like, what's, what's this? What is this? What is this doing? What's going to happen? You know? Hmm. Additionally, I thought I was going to go blind in my left eye because of that extreme pain. I just thought, I thought to myself, there's no way I could be experiencing such pain and not have it have some permanent damage. Like something is really going wrong here. I think I was incorrect. I don't know what was happening there. I've not experienced it since stopping estrogen, so thank goodness for that. Some of these are some really scary stuff, and yeah, anyway. Um, okay, so numbness and warm sensation in leg. My left leg, um, I talked about it a few times. It was starting to go numb in certain parts and have weird sensations and then I would feel like there's this warm liquid running down my leg and at first I thought I was bleeding I was like did I cut myself am I bleeding and I would look on my leg from time to time and there's nothing there and I, th I thought okay am I bleeding internally like what the hell is this because it feel it really feels like there's just warm liquid running down your leg um, and again just such weird experiences and um, Yeah, and almost, honestly, from an outsider's perspective, some people are going to think you were hallucinating. So, no, you know, it's, it, but it seems almost like something you might experience on, like, shrooms or something. It's very strange experiences. You just, there are, I guess it's all neurological, you know? Um, and then the numbness came. So there was the warm sensation and then the numbness, and I looked it up, and apparently when your nerves start dying, it is actually common to feel warm sensations. Um... And so my nerves were dying in my leg, I guess, and that's stopped. And we'll get into we'll get into how I am now later in a second. But um, yeah, so I was like, gosh, okay, because I had my thing, my you know, surgery on my left hand and uh, or an elbow, and um, because of the numbness there. And so I thought, oh man, am I gonna have to have surgery on my leg? You know, am I, is my leg gonna stop working? And am, am I gonna have you know excruciating pain in my leg next? Like, what's gonna happen here? I had no idea. I was very scared about certain things. Um, and I guess we'll get into the mental stuff now. So the last two are constant suicidal thoughts and constantly worrying about how I look. So suicidal thoughts. Um, I guess I had that little episode a month ago that's on my channel where they, it shows I hate you. <laughs> I didn't change the title because I want I want to keep everything as it is, you know, just to sort of preserve the history because I could, I could delete it. I could private the video and maybe I should, honestly. But, um... Because I don't like putting hate out in general, but, but, uh, well, that's what I put. I mean, that's what I did. So it's just part of the history, right? I mean, that was a moment. I could delete it, but it was still, it's still a moment. I don't know. Privating it, deleting it sort of feels like lying. So I'm not going to do that, I guess. Uh, at least not for now. and the constantly worrying about how I look. So, yeah, I mean, just constantly obsessing about transitioning and, you know, facial feminization surgery. I was saving money so I could do that, and I actually got enough money to do that, and I would have done that probably in the next two years um, if I could have. I had the money. I was going to do it. Um, you know, I was going to have my whole jaw shaved down, <laughs> And my brow ridge just carved down, chiseled down, and um, what else? Oh, probably a nose job, and probably I would have had my, you know, my nose made smaller like Blair White's, right? Um, and all, all this stuff they do, you know? I was going to do the whole the whole shebang. That's what I wanted. And um, it's kind of funny to me now. <laughs> if I had done it, I wouldn't beat myself up so much. Um, but, you know. I'm glad I didn't do it. Um, 
but it's, it's you know, it's, honestly, it's no big deal. I'm glad I didn't do it, but it, if I had done it, the thing is, that is a pretty brutal surgery, uh, the recovery, and additionally, um, it can cause numbness in your face. So I guess the reason I'm the, I'm, I'm the most happy I didn't do it, it's just that I don't have any numbness like in my face at all. So my face is totally fine. So in that sense, because I do have slight numbness from my arm surgery right here. And this bothers me a little. It's weird to have a part of your body be numb. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just uncomfortable. And um, so, but I've, I've come to accept this and deal with it. And, it is what it is, um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that on my face. You know what I mean? Uh, that's an especially uncomfortable place for it. So um, I guess I'll take. I'll take the a little karmic, the karmic numbness here, instead of all over my face, because um, you know how those surgeons can mess you all up. And that's, that's, that's uh, most of it. Uh, if you look through my videos, you'll see I had certain other issues um, that I had here and there, but these are the main ones. So what am I dealing with now? So I have no eye pain, ever. Um, I have red eyes all the time. That's just from my autoimmune condition or allergies or something. My eyes have always been very, very bloodshot and red. It's just how they are. Could be the climate, could be my autoimmunity. But it's not painful, it's just maybe a little irritated, but I've gotten very used to that, so that's not at all bothering me. Um, so no pain when I wake up, no blurriness in my eyes, zero double vision. My double vision is entirely gone. Um, I will have slight focus issues, like it'll be hard to look at computer screens if my diet is not perfect, and by perfect I mean I can't have any sugar, no sodas, no caffeine, no grains of any sort, very healthy, a lot of plants, a lot of fiber, um, perfect diet, uh, no junk whatsoever. And by junk, I mean even like, even eating rice will mess me up because it's a grain. So like not even any rice. Um, so like, I mean like genuinely a perfect diet. If I have a perfect diet, I'm perfectly fine. Currently, I did just have a bunch of sugar, so. Maybe not 100%, maybe I'm at about 80%, maybe 70% right now, but that's my choice. It's a choice I chose, and I don't have to do that, but, you know, I decided to drink some sodas, whatever. Um, and, you know, I'm okay. I, I do feel it, though. So my body doesn't like sugar anymore. I don't know. Um, let me think. Oh, I don't need to think. Let me look at this paper. So no vertigo, none. I have slight, very subtle balancing issues. Not to where I'm like about to tip over at all. But what I mean is like, you know, I'll be going about my daily life and suddenly I'll feel like the building just shook, like there was an earthquake or something. There are no earthquakes here, by the way, where I live. So it's like, okay, what the hell was that? And uh, it's me and it's, it's slightly jarring, but I would absolutely take that over the vertigo I was experiencing where the room was spinning and everything. So, you know, just a quirky little thing I, I deal with now, and maybe that'll get better um, if I stop drinking so much sodas. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so certainly a lot better on that front. Like, a million, an infinite amount times better. I mean, just totally disabled and, and miserable um, when I was transitioning to completely fine now absolutely insane how how different everything is unable to stay awake I'm, I'm able to stay awake for a normal amount of hours now so um again it m does somewhat depend on my diet if i if i go off the rails and start eating like fake uh glu like gluten-free things gluten-free where they have buckwheat or sorghum flour or rice flour or tapioca starch or some 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 additive that they and it does the same thing that grains do to me. And if I start eating something like that, it's back to sleep, and uh, my body will recover in about three three days to a week. Um, so I can't I can't do that. I just can't. As much as it annoys me to have to eat like chickpeas, peas, and um, you know, uh, like 
vegetable soups and stuff. Um, it annoys me at the same time. I also really like eating that simply because I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat. It's like, okay, some chickpeas. We're eating some peas now. We're eating, it's just very simple, and I actually kind of like it. But, <laughs> but then I walk by sodas or something. I'll walk by um, something I know I can have at least a little bit of, but it will make me slightly sick. And it's hard to say no, but I should. Um, so I, I'm able to stay awake if I don't hurt my body intentionally, <laughs> basically. Uh, let's see. You know, double vision. No tingling in spine. Haven't had that since I fixed up, fixed up my diet. Um, the leg. So the leg is the weirdest one. Um, because it is gone. Like right now, I my legs are both the same. They're both fine. I feel both of them. There's no tingling or numbness in both of them, in either of them. Um, and so that's really good. But if, again, if I eat like some grains or some, or whatever, I will start to feel a slight twinge in my leg. And if I continue eating grains, that will get worse and worse and worse. And uh, so I just, I really can't, I can't do that anymore. No more greens, not even if it's supposed to be gluten-free. It's all a lie in my, in my opinion. It just, I know some celiac people can eat those other greens, but uh, for me, it's grain-free. And I actually have a lot of snacks. Um, I, I've been able to find a couple really cool grain-free snacks, like macaroons, sorry. Yeah, macaroons, coconut macaroons and stuff. They're actually really nice and um, quite simple. And, you know, I just have a very simple diet, you know, soup, chickpeas, macaroons. It's very simple. It's very humble, I think. I like it in some in, in some ways. And then in other ways, um, you know, I wish I could have a pizza, <laughs> but I can't. I just can't. Especially a real pizza. A real pizza would literally kill me with the amount of gluten in that. Yeah, that would... Uh, and cheese. I can't have dairy either. Any dairy. Um... Okay. Suicidal thoughts. So I had that one instance like a month ago where I said like, I hate you all and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm going to be real. I actually don't know if the ID even caused that. I thought it was the ID. I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Um, I think it was because I had consumed some uh, green... Uh, stuff, some gluten-free stuff that had grains in it, you know, um, gluten-free grains, and it had sent me into a weird sort of depressive episode. I'm not kidding. Um, and then, of course, I had the ID and the, the Twitter thing, but honestly, I don't think I would have posted the videos if I hadn't eaten grains. And um, it's it's scary to think that your, your um, mood can change so suddenly just because you consumed something that everyone else eats all the time, um, but it can. And um, you know, even my dad, you know, I, I don't see my dad often, but I talk to him on the phone sometimes, and I saw him recently, and, um, and even he commented, like, I see him a lot more just stable, just, you know, just normal. He could call it normal, but I don't think he used the word normal. But, you know, a lot less uh, BPD. Right, and uh, uh, when he says those things, it actually kind of bothers me because I don't like him saying, "Oh, you, you seem a lot better." <laughs> it's kind of, if you understand what I'm saying, it's kind of like, ugh, you know. But maybe maybe people won't understand what I'm talking about. But it sucks when you have mental illness and then people say, "Oh, he's, you're doing great today." It's like, can I be the one to tell you I'm doing great? I don't like other people deciding how I'm doing. You know what I mean? Um, because I might not be doing great. I might just be putting up a better act. <laughs> I might be just hiding it better, you know, today. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and it hurts It hurts to suffer and then have people tell you, oh, you're doing so great. And it's like, I'm not. But, uh, he, but he was right. That's the thing. I, I actually agreed with him. You know, I'm like, yeah, you know, you're right. I, I am a lot more stable. Um, even before transitioning, I was, you know, very suicidal. 
and my diet was a mess and had a lot of grains in it. And um, I don't think it was entirely the grains that was causing the suicidality during transition. I think it was the obsession over transitioning and all the mental illness that comes with that and all the weird choices you have to make about like lasering your face and lasering your whole body and electrolysis and thinking about surgery where they chisel down your bones and thinking about all sorts of you know cosmetic procedures you can do on yourself um, and, and wanting those and desiring those and and just wanting to just carve your body up so you because you have this idea of yourself in your head <laughs> um, that's a mental illness in itself you know and uh, so the suicidal thoughts were definitely compounded by the grains but not entirely from the grains but it does seem that when I have no grain in my diet and no sugar and nothing I'm really really stable um, and I'm just good I'm just good and uh, the other day I had some rice brown rice I know it's like oh my gosh <laughs> Um, it should be the healthiest thing ever, but no, it hurts me, and um, and I, I I couldn't sleep that night that I had the brown rice, and I also it, I, I didn't get to the suicidal point because I had been greeting free for a while, but the other night I, I I couldn't sleep, and I was even thinking about taking like you know a benzo or something to knock myself out. I ended up not taking it and getting to sleep finally, but. Um, and I'm pretty happy that I didn't take it, honestly. But so I'm, I'm, I've been drug free for a, a, a good long time now, um, probably about a month. And um, and just totally drug free. Um, but I, I noticed that I also started getting slightly depressive thoughts, not suicidal, but just like, I don't know, I just felt like everything I was doing was wrong and I felt like I should delete all my videos and private, private, private all my videos and just disappear from the internet. And when I get like that, it generally means I'm depressed. Um, even though disappearing from the internet is actually not a bad idea logically. But generally, I don't think about actually doing it unless I'm depressed. And, and a couple other depressive thoughts. And, and, I, and I, I connected it at that point. I was like, huh. I haven't had these thoughts for a while, and I had grains today, so I'm not kidding when I say, like, I can't have grains. It's very strange. Um, and trust me, I want grains. <laughs> it makes your life a lot easier to be able to eat cereal and bread and all sorts of things. These are staples of society, you know, so it's kind of weird not to be able to eat them. Um, but I've found ways to get around it, so it's fine. It's not, it's, not, it's not as big as a deal um, as it might seem. It's not as big of a deal as it might seem. Sorry, I'm kind of spacey, again, because of the sugar. Uh, and and that's, that's mostly it. So overall, my life is physically substantially better. Um, and did I talk about the MRI? Shoot, I don't know if I did. This is already a really long video. Um, but basically, yeah, I, I saw an endo, or sorry, no, I saw a neurologist today, and he has scheduled me for an MRI, and I have an MRI before I transitioned, and to have one after as well will be interesting to see if there's any brain differences, hopefully not, and um, so, you know, we'll, we'll sort of see about uh, that, hopefully everything's fine up there, you know, because if it's not, that's actually really bad, so hopefully there's nothing notable. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to have a brain scan of myself before taking a huge amount of estrogen and anti-androgens every day and after. Um, it'll at least be interesting from a case study perspective. And yeah, I think that's it. So, you know, thank you for watching. I don't want to keep you all here too long. This is already longer than I thought, but I think it's pretty information dense. So it, the length is okay, I think. Um, I just don't want to leave something out because I'm not going to make another video. But overall, I am just getting healthier. I really am, you know. Um, and that's 
it's it's relieving more than anything. I, I I still feel kind of, and you can probably tell, low energy. Don't feel the most happy, but I'm not suffering as much as I was um, when I wanted to literally just kill myself every day. So, yeah, um, I, I guess that's fantastic. I mean, it's it's probably more fantastic than I realize. It probably is. I don't know. You get you you baseline after a while, you know. So it's like I'm doing fine, um, but if I experienced any of these symptoms, I would suddenly be worrying again and and very sad and very scared. And um, yeah, because these are these were really horrible symptoms to have to deal with. So it's it's good that and and on my best days when I'm a lot more energetic than I am now, although I did a lot today, so I'm kind of tired, but. Um, on my best days, I'm very thankful that I don't have to deal with all of this. And even on my best days, I'm very thankful that I have such delicious foods as chickpeas and, and peas and, and soup. Um, it's kind of funny. <laughs> I'm very thankful for uh, having these very mundane, simple foods. Um, and I'm th- I'm thankful for having these delicious sodas as well and, and snacks that I can have as well, although I shouldn't be having them. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I've become a lot more thankful for, I, you might call them sort of mundane things, but it's actually such a beautiful, wholesome feeling um, that I've been having lately about just mundane things. I just, I'm just like, oh, what a beautiful life that I get to have soup. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm weird. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I think that's it. Yep, that's it. I'm gonna go. So, um, thank you again for watching. And I make weird videos on this channel sometimes. They are even weird to me sometimes. So. Although, the, the last video I was going to... People were like, hey, let me see. If you're interested, if you've watched this far, you're probably interested in me to some extent. So, like, I was going to eat peas anyway, and I was going to be mindful about it. And I thought, yes, I'm, you know, do this anyway. May as well record. That's what a lot of my videos have been, by the way. The meat-eating video way back when, I was like, well, I'm going to be eating this raw meat anyway, I may as well make it into an ASMR video, right? Because I thought it was funny. Um, this one, I don't know what I thought. I just thought it was a strange thing to do, to sit and eat a bowl of peas and just not say anything and be mindful about it. It just seemed strange to me, so I recorded it. Um, and But people said some weird stuff. Some people took it as just like the same way I did, where guys like, I like this one a lot. Man's just eating peas in a warm night in a quiet room, drinking on some water. Exactly. That's exactly right. And people said some weird stuff. Like, I really enjoyed this ASMR video. It's not an ASMR video, it's just me eating peas. <laughs> if I made ASMR, it would be a lot better than that. Um, not to flex, but I'm a little better than that. Um, someone said, what level of chess are you playing? Or what level of chess is this you're playing? Um, and uh, I'm not playing chess, I'm just eating peas. <laughs> um, Isaac, you are a delightful, crunchy freak. Okay, but I'm, it's just peas. Like, there's nothing, you don't have to get angry about it, you don't have to love it. This guy said, this is art. It's not art, <laughs> it's just me eating peas. Uh, so some of these comments are. I don't know, it's the internet, you know, it's like, what are you going to do, it's the internet? I don't know, some of these comments are so funny to, I'm getting narcissistic vibes from this dude. And then someone replied, a little bit, or maybe, or it may be that he doesn't want to get demonetized, uh, this person put demonized, but I think they meant demonetized, since he said he's going on hiatus for six moths, I think they meant months in which he can lose, I think they meant lose, his monetization. This person's probably not English for their first language. Um, but no, you don't lose monetization by taking a break. Um, I posted that because I was going to do it anyway, and blah, blah, blah. Um, 
but I don't think it's narcissistic to eat peas. I don't know. And then my favorite comment, this guy gets it. Headbanger Ministries, you get me, man. Uh, 1,214 views, question mark? He's eating peas, says nothing. Knock, knock. How many have actually watched this entire video? Amazing. 12,000 or 1,214 views of a guy eating peas? I agree. So what the hell? <laughs> and then someone else said, this is so based. And then this person who replied to him said, this is a mindful stunt. Get over it. <laughs> what? It's not a stunt. It's just me. Like, I don't know what people think. Do they think when I upload, like, I'm uploading? I don't know what people think. When I upload, I'm just doing it because I feel like recording. Um, because I feel like I have something to do or say. In that case, it was just something different. I had never just sat down and ate a whole bowl of peas before, so I thought I'd record it. That's it. Um, and been and had been mindful while doing it. Um, there's there's not much more there. I think people read into it like it was some sort of statement on society, which is pretty funny. It's pretty funny that me sitting quietly in a room doing the most mundane thing imaginable just eating peas and drinking water gets so much attention and hatred and love and all the things that it absolutely does not deserve. Um, and most people will probably agree with me. Um, and I've been thinking about this, and I don't know, this isn't a video for this, so I'm not going to go into it, but I, I will just say... Society is in a very strange place right now, and I think it's actually pretty dangerous. Um, and I think this video actually perfectly shows that. It's like, this shouldn't be interesting to anyone. It should get zero comments and zero views. The fact that it's interesting, and not only interesting, but people form opinions on it. And it, I think someone said, so someone said something like, um, oh yeah, I used to, like, there were a couple of people who said something like, I used to think you were cool, but now I realize you're actually lame. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you thought I was cool until I ate peas? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's a strange video because of the comments. The comment section made it an art piece, if anything. Um, because, yeah, it should have been completely just nothing anyone ever had any thought about and you didn't even watch because why would you watch someone eating peas it doesn't make sense to me so yeah um, again I don't want to make this part of this video but it's something I've been considering lately we'll have maybe more videos on those thoughts when I formalize them and um, you know it's my channel get to do what I want if you don't like it you're free to leave um, I will do this if nobody watched, and I do mean that. So, you know, uh, but I'm, I'm glad everyone is here. It's kind of more fun. It is more fun, but um, regardless of anyone watching, I'm still going to do these videos because I think it's important. So, take care for real this time. And goodbye.